So let's write a little main function. Before I even said it, our AI has suggested something. So it's firstly uh, writing an empty list function and it's uh, initializing list equal to empty list. If list is null, it is returning one from main. Remember, the main function by default returns zero. It returns one if something bad happens and this is one of those situations where something bad indeed happened. Right? So in that case, we return one. Otherwise, if we get to line 73, uh, we have a non-null list and then we can go ahead and append values to it. Remember, the very first uh, list we create is of capacity 1. So it will only be able to handle the 1. But then when we try and append 2, it will double the capacity. And then when we try and add 3, it will further double the capacity. So at some point, it will have enough space to handle all these new items. Then it has written this particular code for printing all the items in that list. It uses not a while loop, but a for loop. A for loop in C is quite different to a for loop in Python. In C, a for loop is basically a neater way of writing a while loop. What does a while loop do? Well, in a while loop, you first typically initialize some variable that you are going to use to iterate through that while loop. That initialization is done at the beginning before we enter the while loop. In a for loop, we write that initialization right here on line one. So this statement int i equal to zero initializes a local variable only for the purposes of this for loop and it initializes it to zero before starting the while loop. Then we have while some condition. Well, that condition is right here again on line one. And then in a while loop, before we end the while loop and jump back to the top, we usually do some sort of update to this loop variable. That update also happens right here on line one. At least visually in a for loop, all these three things, the initialization, the condition, and the update are all shown on line one. But the way they occur is just like in a while loop. It's as if before entering this for loop, we, we have created this variable i and initialized it to zero. And it is as if each time we come to line 78, we are going to check this condition. And it is as if before we jump back to line 78, we do this i++. Right? So this for loop is exactly equivalent to the following while loop as if we are writing that initialization here and then we are writing a while loop with this condition and then over here at the end we are writing i++ right but it's so much neater to use a for loop once you know how to read the syntax right now that we are writing for loops let's use a for loop but in let's use so let's let's print uh, the list but in reverse order using negative indexing right so let us see if we it can negative indices right so let's see if we can do that right so it will say for int i equals minus one i greater than or equal to the negative of the length of the list remember in a list of length n the negative indices are from minus 1 to minus n. And then i minus minus is like i plus plus, but it, of course, subtracts a value. Right? And so this should print the negative indices. Right? And lastly, we have uh, done with the list, we should free up that list. It's suggesting that we manually free up list arrow values and the list itself. I don't like this, so how about we do one last thing? How about we create a function for freeing up the list? This is not something we promised, but let's add a function to free the memory allocated for the list. That would be a nice function to have. That does those two statements in a little helper function. And so now we can free that list. So this is what 
programming with AI looks when we are programming C code. You have to be very much in control as the pilot. This is only the co-pilot. You have to know what you want. You have to look out for errors. You have to comprehend the code. If you are dissatisfied with the code, you must reprompt your AI.